started. So uh, thank you very much everyone for joining us today. Uh, so I'm Emmanuel Crosser. Uh, I'm a lead talent acquisition consultant at diversifying.io. I've been with the organization for a little over 18 months and I've been thoroughly enjoying my time with the organization. Um, but today I'd like to say uh, we're certainly delighted to be partnering with Diageo. Uh, our partnership with Diageo actually started in October 2020 and has been an incredible journey so far. We've been supporting Diageo on a number of different things, um, looking at recruitment marketing, uh, looking at advertising, employer brand amplification, reaching different diverse audiences, diversity in training, and also on the consultancy side of things as well. Uh, very much keen to see where our partnership does end up. Um, but for today, I would really like to, well, we will be exploring a little bit more about uh, Diageo's digital career opportunities and a little bit more about what digital means at Diageo. Um, just to outline the session today, uh, we'll be looking at a 35 minute panel discussion, uh, which will be followed by a Q&A session. We really want you to get involved as the session goes on. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to place them within the chat box. And then the questions will be asked at the end of the session within the Q&A. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to start with introductions of our panel members, and I'd like to start with Julie. Julie Hamilton, how are you? Hello, I'm great. I'm really looking forward to the session, and uh, uh, it's going to be a, a quick um, hour, and uh, I'm hoping we'll have some really good questions and good um, discussion as we go along. Certainly so. Uh, well, I've got the first question for you, Julie. <laughs> so uh, can you tell us a bit about your role at Diageo uh, and also uh, what you love most about your role, please? Uh, yes. So I am the uh, Global Chief Commercial Officer uh, and uh, have the uh, honor of leading our global sales team, uh, as well as the function commercial and sales. So what does that mean? Um, it means we're a function of about 6,000 people who are responsible for either direct sales or working with our um, distributor uh, partners uh, in all of our 100 plus markets around the world. Um, what I have loved best, and I've been here uh, in this role for three years, uh, joined Diageo after a long career at Coca-Cola. Uh, what I love best, uh, besides all the great things about the company, is that uh, we've really been leading a digital transformation of how we work with our customers and how our sales force works. So it's been super exciting to be part of, to really see the transformation um, and to be driving that uh, and see it come to life in the market uh, every day. So uh, I have a, a fantastic team, um, highly energized and uh, really uh, it's been a, a fantastic uh, three years and it's just coming up on my three year anniversary. Hey, well, is it uh, too early to say congratulations on your three year anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> it's a small milestone, but uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> I like that. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to introduce Paula Dart next. Hello, Paula. Hello, everybody. Um, so my name is Paula Dart. I am the lead of what we call our global e-commerce center of excellence. So what that means is it's a small team sitting within our kind of global corporate head office function responsible for building capabilities around e-commerce and really setting the vision and the ambition for what role e-commerce will play in our total growth of our company and the growth of our brands. So getting into the minds of consumers and shoppers understanding their motives for wanting to buy our products and engage with our products online, and then having the discipline and the um, excellence to be better than any of our competition, any that better than any other brand so that we win conversion and grow sales. So that's, that's what I do. And uh, what I love about my job is so many things. But um, for one, I'm in a global role. So I get to interact with markets, different markets around the world all day long, which means that I'm learning every single day. So a role in which I can learn and grow and develop my own knowledge and skills and capabilities is super important to me and very motivating. But also, if you think about e-commerce and what makes it unique, it really sits between marketing and commercial. 
So finding the bridge between making sure our brands are highly visible online and then having the wherewithal to um, sell that brand through a customer and through more traditional commercial capabilities is something I love. So I'm not necessarily a marketing purist and I'm not necessarily a commercial purist. I'm sort of sitting in the middle, which is, um, which is really fun because I get to interact on both sides of our functional capabilities around, across the organization. I like that. I think your role's got a terrific blend, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and I'd like to introduce our final panelist. So we've got Isabel Macy. Hello, hello. Hello, uh, lovely to see everyone on the call today. I'm Isabel, I'm responsible for media globally at Diageo. And media is one of those careers that people always say that you accidentally fall into and people don't always know what it is. And so uh, for those of you who aren't close to it, it means uh, where we um, plan and we buy our um, advertising activity. So everything from TV programming through to digital activations, through to hopefully in the not too distant future, thinking about the metaverse and beyond. So um, it really is an exciting, vibrant and ever evolving space and one that needs expert leadership um, across our organization. And so that's what I'm responsible for, ensuring that in every single market and globally, we're really leading our organization to invest in media most effectively and also most responsibly, which is a topic we'll come on to talk about uh, later on. And uh, beyond uh, the day-to-day -day, as part of my job, um, I'm also the co-chair of the World Federation of Advertisers Media Board. And the reason this is so important for me is because actually, Diageo, we want to take a leadership position out in the industry as well, because there are so many topics when it comes to media and marketing that actually, you know, we can't do by ourselves. We as advertisers have to come together to really drive a change in. So an example of one of those is all the work that we've been doing with world platforms like Meta to really make sure that we're setting it up to be a powerful consumer first safe platform of the future um so what do I love about my job um well obviously apart from everything I've mentioned clearly working with these two ladies who are on the phone with me <laughs> the people of Diageo is definitely what makes it what it's great I like that. Well, thank you everyone for your introduction. And uh, this is our panel for the day. Uh, but before we go into the main panel discussion, it's worthwhile noting that we've also got Shan on the call, who works within HR. So for the audience, if you do have any questions that may be more HR orientated, she'll be here for the rest of the um, webinar event to be able to answer them as well. Um, however, I think the world digital at the moment is seriously moving forward and transforming. I think it would be great to sort of understand what digital means at Diageo, but also what's next for this area of the organization in terms of development and innovation. And if I could pass that question to you, Paula, that would be great. Happy to. So it's, it's kind of funny because I think if you asked 100 people at Diageo what they think digital is, you'll get 100 different answers. <laughs> And I, I think that's an indication of how fast the space is moving more than um, an indication of a lack of understanding. And I think the biggest message inside this is that we need digital to become personal to every individual, meaning there's not, um, we're not gonna be able to write down on a piece of paper what digital is and how people do it. The point about digital is that it's going to impact and influence and affect everything that everybody does every day. And so to get a hundred different answers is actually probably a good thing because how supply chain defines digital will be different than marketing, which will be different than sales and different than HR. Um, so if I, uh, I don't know if you want me to turn my camera off cause I think I'm a little laggy, but maybe if you can hear me just fine, that's fine. Okay, good. Um, so, what we mean though, in terms of our own transformation is really kind of three parts. First mm -hmm. of all, we really wanna engage with consumers in a whole new way. We also wanna engage with customers in a whole new way and how we do business, we want to happen in a whole new way. And the ways in which we're going to be able to do that are going to really be come from our ability to use data and technology to do things in a better and a new, a more efficient, more effective way than ever. 
So using data and technology to engage consumers, have relationships with them, think about ways in which we can become, solve problems for them. That's digital. Same thing with customers. How do we interact with customers using d- data and technology? How do we be able to predict what they need from us? How do we be there where they need us, when they need us? That's digital. And then of course, obviously all of our engines internally need to be able to run on data and technology so that we can connect better. We can connect agilely. We can use technology to be able to do our internal processes more simply to free us up to be thinking about our consumers and our customers. All of that's in the space where with Isabel and and actually Julie too, in many regards of how we transform with consumers. So we Mm -hmm. are taking a very consumer back mindset. What do consumers, how do consumers want to discover our brands? Where are they looking to buy? How are they looking to, oh, of course, I'm back. I was just saying that I work on the consumer part. I don't know how much of you heard of that, but it's it's the way we think about it is um, how we discover, how consumers discover our brands, where and how they want to buy our brands, and then what communities do they want to be part of to talk about our brands, share our brands with each other, and really celebrate the way in brands come to life. So digital, obviously, different, depending on who you talk to. Digital, secondly, part of everything that everybody does. Mm -hmm. And then digital is about using data and technology to solve problems for consumers, for customers, and for ourselves internally. I like that. Thank you very much. And by the sounds of things, it's definitely data and audience driven, but it seems like an amazing and exciting time for transformation. So thank you very much for that. Um, And why is diversity and inclusion important at Diageo? And how do you practice um, and implement this within your team? If I could pass this to you, Julie, to start off with. Yeah, I'd be happy to take that question. Um, You know, I think uh, diversity, is critically important and respected at Diageo. Um, One of the biggest opportunities that we have is our people um, and letting our people bring their true self to work every day um, is a big piece of that. Um, What really Diageo has done and embraced is that there is something for everyone. Uh, So there's uh, really um, diversity of background, um, there's diversity of thought, uh, there's diversity of gender orientation, um, and that's all embraced. So we've got uh, your standard kind of business resources groups, um, but those really uh, are fully um, activated and really driven by passionate people. So there are ways that you can easily connect in with others, um, and you can also connect uh, in lots of um, very social and learning ways too. So the organization fully believes in um, our our purpose of celebrating life every day, everywhere. And there's truly always a reason to celebrate, whether it's about learning about a brand, it's about learning about a cocktail, it's a holiday, it's a great guest speaker, it's someone with thought provoking um, subjects. So, um, you know, we have a full calendar uh, of those sorts of activities that I think really lets people um, explore and learn. And that's all part of um, diversity and feeling comfortable uh, to, to really bring your true self to work and know that um, you're fully empowered to do that. Uh, I think um, Diageo also through a lot of its working practices, uh, it really respects um, diversity and the individual's own unique situations. So whether it's all our very kind of progressive family leave opportunities, um, we are one of the first companies to actually uh, have a program around menopause, um, which is uh, very rare (laughs) and kind of trailblazing. Um, We are also uh, really fully embracing the concept of um, such assignments and gig opportunities, which I think really helps people diversify um, their background and their skill set. So you can apply to 
um, you know, participate in a team or an assignment uh, that maybe requires a couple, you know, hours a week with approval from your manager. So if you work in marketing and you're interested in getting more sales experience, there's ways to do that. So, um, you know, what I think is best about the way Diageo approaches diversity is it's diversity in people and backgrounds. It's diversity in the culture that we create and it's diversity in the opportunities that are there for people to build their skills and really get exposure to lots of uh, other areas. So um, it's a very broad uh, spectrum of diversity that I think really, really helps um, create an amazing, amazing culture that we have at Diageo. And I just, I feel every day, I just feel so lucky to be part of it. And Julie, just you bringing it to life there. Sometimes you just forget on a day-to-day -day basis because it is just how we operate. If I think about me and my team and yesterday, you know, someone would very readily, I'd be sharing an opinion on how we do something. And someone in my team um, who isn't as experienced as, as me, but comes and sees the world from a different place would say, actually, I've got a bit of a different perspective on how we do things. And that person gets listened to just as equally in a room and in fact we went with that way rather than the way that was originally suggested and that is just the way we do things that we really value diverse thinking which we know comes from bringing in diverse people into our organization and then feeling included and respected at every single interaction that we have and it's something that I think is just the way we are and doesn't that make it wonderful yeah, and I think another piece that really helps build the diversity is that um, we've got a lot of global roles. I mean, we stretch across across the world. Um, and if I just look at, you know, my team were based, physically based in 16 different countries. So when you put that, that those people together, even if it's a smaller above market team, um, you're really bringing diversity of experience, background, perspective cultures together and I think that's uh you know what really to me it's one of the things that makes it most exciting to get to work um is that you know bringing in someone from Southeast Asia and someone from Kenya into the same conversation on a daily basis um and that you really get the best the best ideas and the best thinking coming from, from that diversity of um place as well and it makes it a, a lot of fun to to have meetings and hear what's going on places so I like that I think listening to both of you you can really tell that DNI is at the core of everything that you do and I think that's clearly come out through our partnership as well and some of the pieces that we've been trying so I think when it comes to DNI it's definitely something that DR should do take seriously and uh, I think it's great to hear about it from your experiences as well um can you tell us a little bit more about your sustainability initiatives? And if I was to throw this across to you, Isabel? Yeah, very happy to. And so I think working for, for Diageo, we always talk about how it's incredibly important that we're not just the best performing, but we're also the most, most trusted and respected uh, CPG out there. And um, that's our performance ambition, but it really does ladder through to absolutely every single thing that we do. So when we start talking about sustainability, which obviously is absolutely core to being best performing, most trusted and respected now and in the future, it's something that everyone takes very seriously. And um, I remember when I first started talking about this from a digital point of view, I was thinking, what can I do in my day to day that is going to really drive the sustainability efforts? And then started thinking about our media supply chain and the impact on um, carbon emissions as part of that. And actually, I was quite inspired by a trip that we did to the um, Bailey's Farms over in Ireland going back a few years ago, where the farmers there talked about all the efforts they put into creating a sustainable supply chain. And I started thinking about, oh, how does this relate to the media supply chain and what can we do? Where can we minimize wastage? Because wastage not only is bad for business, for, for our business results, but also it has a impact on sustainability. So as an example, if we think about the media supply chain, you know, one of the big things that any any media experts in the room will know is that a big thing that we try and tackle in media is uh, viewability issues. In other words, when ads are shown on screens, but people can't actually see them. And we, we readily try and reduce that and don't pay for it when it happens. And so it's always been a standard that you just 
you don't pay for it when it happens, but it still happens. Whereas now we're saying, well, hang on a minute, it's all very well not paying for it, but there's still energy usage when that ad gets served, particularly when it's a heavy load of content that gets put out there. So how can we make sure that platforms um, don't serve those ads at all in the first place? Because that would have an incredible impact on um, the level of, of carbon out there. Um, in the same way as we think about things like this move towards connected TVs, what we're seeing is that people's TVs, everyone's seen it, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Wow, that means if you think about TV in terms of its energy usage, it's huge. It's by miles the um, biggest carbon emission as part of our media plans. So we really have to think about that as we're, we're balancing out our plans. Um, it, this makes it such an exciting space to learn in. And I'm learning every day about the impact of our plans and the choices that, we, um, uh, that we're making. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have a passion for this area, please, please do come and talk to us about it. It's part and parcel of what we're doing every single day here at Diageo. And it's a genuine part of our media decision making. I like that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just add a little bit from a commercial perspective, from a sales standpoint, um, you know, there's a huge opportunity for us to shift uh, the way that we do things. And this is where our digital transformation really comes in. And, you know, one of the the positive side effects of COVID is it really helped us accelerate um, the reduction of physical sales calls. So if you think how the industry has traditionally happened, a sales rep gets in their car, they drive, they park, they go in and talk to a customer, uh, they make a sale, they get back in their car, they drive to the next one. And that happens you know, multiple times, eight to 10 times a day. Um, with both digital tools that are letting us be much more effective, letting customers order on their own time, uh, letting us um, do a blend of both physical and digital sales calls. We've reduced um, the percentage, you know, pre-COVID, we were about 95% of all our sales interactions with customers were physical. So they took place in person and we're now right about 50-50. So uh, think of that huge sustainability impact of all those sales calls, all those cars, all that traffic that people sat in every day um, in central London, in central Dublin, uh, you know, in Madrid, making these sales calls uh, and the huge impact that that's had from a sustainability standpoint. So it's where we really see digital um, and sustainability come together. Uh, and, you know, there's big wins and there's small wins. Ireland, for example, uh, with our uh, EB2B um, platform was able to eliminate all paper invoicing um, and all that postage and all the paper use uh, um, for their customers. And it made it easier for customers. It, it reduced the timing. They got their um, orders quicker. They got their payments faster. Uh, and it had a positive impact on, on the environment. So I think we're finding that the digital and sustainability go hand in hand in many ways and that um, the transformations that we're driving uh, really can be both powerful you know from both perspectives and uh, so that's where sustainability is really really a critical uh, enabler and and a byproduct of a lot of the things that we're doing exactly I, i'll just jump in and add one little tiny extra point which is E-commerce often gets a fairly um, bad name in the sustainability space because people think about all the extra shipping that happens. But uh, we recently commissioned some work with uh, the Cambridge University students had an opportunity to do a project for us, which is also tied to our diversity and inclusion. And to Isabel's point, good ideas and good thinking come from lots of different places. And so we had this group of students present back to us. And um, based on their analysis, e-commerce is not negatively um, impacting our ESG agenda like we thought it was, because all things considered, all the cars on the road, all the shipments that happen to get products to stores is about mm -hmm. equal to centralizing shipments and sending products to people's houses. So it's not as bad as we think it is, but you have to be conscious of where it is not um, supportive of our ESG goals. And that's where we partner with people like Amazon and we sign pledges together and say, how are we actually going to be um, supporting our, the sustainability of the world that we live in? 
And you come up with things like ship in its own container so that you reduce packaging because we know packaging is a big problem with Amazon. They are actively working to address that on their side as we are on ours. And so ideas come from everywhere. Sustainability is something that you have to understand to be able to tackle the real problems because a lot of times problems become um, perception versus reality. And then you've got to make a commitment across all parts of the industry to work together, whether it's media partners or content and creative or packaging or customers and together we're going to win. So lots of fun stuff happening in this space. Very exciting. I like that. And it seems like in every single business area, there is a conscious effort to think about sustainability and actually how you can have an impact on that, which I think is very much important. Um, but for the people within this event now, um, what advice would you give to someone wanting to apply for a digital role uh, and how can they excel within that role at DRGO? Who do you want to go? Um, I'll go first. <laughs> Isabel, why don't you jump in? Yeah, gladly. Uh, look, I I'm so excited about how vibrant the types of roles in Diageo are for people who are either digital specialists or people who are just incredibly passionate about digital. Because to Paula's point earlier, digital is really embedding itself as every aspect of our business. So my first piece of advice would be, don't worry if you are not too much of a digital expert. If you are passionate about this area and you are excited to learn, we really want you in our business because that's exactly the mindset of people that 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 we'd like to have in every corner of of our business but in addition to that we are really aware that in order to go fast you do need to have specialist skills as well and so if there is a particular skill that you have something that you spike in let us know there might not be a role available for you right now um but we want to hear from you because I can damn well guarantee that at some point over the next 24 months, there'll be a, something that comes up and we'll go, oh, actually, that's exactly the skill that we need at this moment in time. So we're very excited to hear from you. Please do get in touch. Um, myself and Paula are constantly talking about talent is probably one of our like top topics that we talk about um, as it, we know that that's what's going to make our business excel. We're so we're so aligned, Isabel. That was the point I was going to make. Uh, <laughs> you have a spike somewhere. But couldn't have let me go in. first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I regretted that quite quickly. <laughs> um, I I do think though, just kind of look, thinking generally about myself and about the people that um, join the company and my team. In addition to what Isabel said, also don't underestimate the power of networks. Really, truly, so much of talent that comes across our desks are coming from people that we know from outside of our company, outside of the role that we're in, and getting to the top of the pile is super, super important. So if you're looking to build careers, whether it's digital or not, leverage your network, be active in LinkedIn and other forums, it's all about having your name be seen, be visible and be at top of mind because there is a huge talent pool, let's just face it. And lots of people are building digital skills. You wanna be the one that comes to mind like Isabel said when, oh, I have, I have a job, I need a person. And then your name is the one that gets inserted here. So it's only gonna come through networking. Don't apologize for reaching out to people, even if you're a second connection to somebody, just say, hey, I just want to let you know that this is what I'm doing. This is my brilliant experience. If you ever have anything, keep me in mind. Even if you never hear back, you're still another data point in somebody's head. And that person will then potentially forward you on. Just build that network. Don't be shy. Don't hide under a rock. Be proud of what you do. Don't apologize for what experience you don't have. Celebrate the stuff you do. And, and really, quite honestly, it's just as much about marketing and selling yourself as it is about those deep, rich experiences that you have. <laughs> I think to build on Paula's point, <laughs> um, what I would just also say is um, I encourage everyone to think broadly. So <clears throat> digital is 
not something a certain department does at Diageo. And it's not necessarily going to be in every single role title that you see. Um, so think broadly because digital is impacting and, you know, and it's part of so many roles. So don't feel that, you know, if that role is very interesting to you, but it doesn't say it's a digital in the title, that digital isn't a big piece of it. So particularly on the sales and commercial side, being digitally savvy and being um, having great digital skills is critical in a lot of what we do and the tools that we're building um, and the programming that we're driving to, to drive capability across um, the, the entire globe. Um, so think broadly, don't be limited uh, and don't feel that, you know, um, there's not just one department at Diageo that's sitting doing digital. It is um, really, truly um, a very global um, focus and it, it impacts every single department. So whether that's supply or it's finance, um, there is digital roles everywhere. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that, Julie. Um, I mean, there's been a great panel discussion so far. Uh, and what's great to see as well is there's loads of lovely questions coming through ready for you. Uh, before we go through to the questions that are coming in now, there were some people who were unable to attend, and we do have a couple of questions from them. Uh, I know some of it was touched upon briefly, um, but one of the questions was just asking me around the culture within the teams and how the teams sort of work together. Um, and I'd like to open that to the panel. I mean, we talk about celebrating life every day, everywhere. And um, one of the things that I find about working at Diageo is that it does truly come out day to day. I find the culture to be equally fun and fulfilling. And everyone has such positive intent in terms of growing the business. It's always about, right, how is this going to be great for the business? Um, so... To, to work in a, in a culture that is, is supportive is really business orientated around growth. So therefore everyone brings a growth mindset to the game is, is truly exciting. But I, I'll go back to what I said in the first place, which is celebrating life every day, everywhere really is a mantra that comes out um, every single day. And, and um, I, I work in the London office um, and it's uh, newly established in, in Soho. It's called One HQ. Um, it has a bar and a shop that that people from the streets can come into. Um, but also importantly, we as a team spend time there on a regular basis. It's a it's a really important place for us to, you know, really kind of chew the fat, get to know each other well. That's that's an important part of, of, of what we do. And people really, really enjoy it. We come to the office to spend time together as a team to get to know each other better so that we can operate better as a team um, and we can operate better with other teams as well. Um, and that 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 comes out in in the work that we do, the way that we operate and the way we celebrate. Thank you very much. I'll just jump in just really quickly and just add that I've only only been with Diageo two years and like Julie prior to Diageo I spent two decades at a different company and the thing that blew me away when I joined Diageo was how welcomed I felt from day one and I see that now that I've been here as new people join people absolutely embrace people who come in from the outside into the organization because they like the culture of the company is to look for new ideas. Isabel touched upon it earlier. We look for new ideas and new experiences and new ways of thinking is part of the culture versus this mentality of that's not how we do things. Or maybe you, you, you're not, you haven't been here a long time and so therefore you're not like us. It's the opposite of that. It's, it's so refreshing to see a company that um, can make somebody feel like family so quickly because that then just sets the right tone for how people bring themselves to work because they bring themselves to work with confidence from early on and a sense of belonging that if you don't have that, you don't get the best out of the talent. It's really brilliant. I like that. Thank you. I think there's something really powerful about people being able to bring their true authentic selves at work, really, isn't it? That's how you can truly get the best out of people. Um, but thank you very much to all the panel members. Um, now, we've got some great questions that have started coming through. Um, the first one is from George. 
Uh, so George has asked, does Diageo provide internships and or apprenticeships in employment for international candidates? I'm happy to. I don't know the answer to that in. one, so I can't answer. <laughs> I'm like, Zisha might know a little bit more on that one. She might be able to help uh, on the actual um, approach to those. And then I think each of us has some, um, you know, experience uh, that we might be able to add. So, Isabel. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, I was just going to say the same. So I, it varies by market is the answer um, to that. So do get in touch to, and, and we can talk through what we do via market. We do work with institutes. We make sure that we are um, thinking about how to bring in candidates, not just from traditional fields, but thinking about ways that we can encourage those that wouldn't normally consider a, a going a route into Diageo to, to do that. So I'm be very keen to have follow-up conversations if it's specific to, to digital, um, but, do get in contact with, with the HR team via the links that are provided because they'll be able to provide all sorts of details based on the markets that you're talking about. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and we've got a question from Ben, uh, who firstly said they've enjoyed the session so far, so thank you. <laughs> um, but how diverse are the different types of work, i.e. flexi, part-time, and working from home facilitated at Diageo? And if I can pass that to you, Isabel? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to jump in here because I'm I'm a very loud and proud flexible worker. Um I so I've since I had my twin girls which was 2 years ago when I returned to work, it was so important to me particularly post pandemic to make sure I maintained a really strong balance between being able to be what I perceived as spending enough time with them as mm -hmm. also doing a great job and Diageo has just been so so supportive of that so to to give you practical um example of what that means it means I don't work on a Friday but that's what I have chosen to do that's what works for me I tend to work longer hours in the week I work with and run a team that's based out of the US so that works really well for me to do that after hours um and that gives you an indication of the way that Diageo works it's having a conversation around your job what it takes to get it done, what are your passion areas, the things that are sacred to you outside of your job, and how those two things can come together brilliantly. That is what Diageo is great at. So um, there isn't a set, this is the way it is, this is what flexible working is. It's really a conversation one-on-one -on -one around you and what it'll take for you to do an incredible job in Diageo, because that's what we want. We want people who will operate at their best day in, day out. And for me, that means knowing that I feel that I am doing what I want to do outside the office with my beautiful twin girls that I feel so fortunate to have day to day. Um, so if you are interested in flexi working, um, then then Diageo is definitely a place for you to be having a conversation with. Um, we we are very, very supportive of it. And I have firsthand experience of that. And, and what I would add is that, um, you know, it varies by role. So it is really defined by the role and the work. Um, there are some roles that, you know, obviously uh, need to be in an office or a manufacturing center or, you know, are, that physical presence is required. Um, and then there are others where uh, it lends itself very well to flex programs. Uh, you know, I, for one, I'm, I'm home based. Uh, so in the U.S. and uh, that has been um, critically important to me and, and worked really, really well. Uh, it's then incumbent on you to make the connections, um, facilitate the time that you are in the office to, to take advantage of those celebration moments and connections uh, and, you know, find ways to do that. So, you know, I think if I look across um, my team, it's a blend of um, home and office based uh, because we are global, it does lend itself very well to some strange working hours and for you really to figure out what works best for you. So because I'm in the US, I pick up very early in the morning with a lot of Europe and Africa, um, then may take a break, um, you know, in my afternoon that becomes, you know, evening for those parts and then pick up with Asia uh, later in the night. So you just kind of um, are very uh, empowered to figure out what it takes to get your job done 
um, communicate that clearly with your manager so people have expectations and understand what it is and why. Um, and, and Diageo has been great uh, about really making sure that you're set up to be successful, both personally and professionally. Wonderful, thank you. And it really seems like there is flexibility there and it's on a personal level. There is no benchmark rule of, okay, this is what flexibility looks like, but it's down to the specific person and individual to be able to make sure that it really works for them, which is always good to hear. Um, We've got another question here from an anonymous attendee um, who has asked, do you have any specific uh, initiatives around disability and making working with you accessible for people with disabilities? And if yet again, I can open that to the panel. Um, I'm happy to take that just from a US perspective. Um, and I know that uh, similar is underway in Europe. Um, our US uh, office has a task force that is all around um, disability and accessibility and really ensuring that any new office builds, as well as if we're located in a larger office building, that we are driving change to make things very accessible. So our Three World Trade Center in New York, um, the team's been pushing on everything from the way that you check in um, at the office building that we don't own, but we have two floors, uh, but it, it impacts accessibility for people. Uh, all the way through then, you know, how, how do we um, make sure that all of our facilities um, are accommodating for different um, disabilities, whether that's accessibility or it's, um, you know, multiple differences, but there's, there's actually teams that are really involved in, in driving change um, with our HR teams, and they're empowered to bring those recommendations and those are acted on. So, uh, it's, it's part of the diversity, too, is that we've got people who are very passionate about it, and they are able to have their passionate voices and recommendations heard um, and acted on. So it's, it's very important, um, particularly, you know, I speak from a U.S. perspective just because it's there's a lot of action going on in our New York office because of that. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I think, I think it's so important now because I think everyone's felt that the return to the office has been hard for for various reasons but obviously you know depending on your circumstance depending on your abilities as an employer it's so important that we make it as easy and inclusive as welcoming as possible and that's something that you know you talk about the new york office julie from a london office with the one hq building opening it really really has felt that way as well in terms of it being designed to be inclusive from the start and um and so yeah it's a um if you have the opportunity to to pop in to have a look around the the bar to have a look around the the shop area anytime um hopefully you'll see that in action Thank you. Uh, I've got another question here that says, uh, I'm interested in Diageo's e-commerce line of business. Is there a project manager, business analyst opportunity available at the moment? Uh, and furthermore, can Diageo offer a tier two skill visa sponsorship? So I think this might be a mixture between Zishan and um, potentially Paula. Well, I can speak to the role itself. Um, I'm sorry, I'm relying on Zishan to talk about the visa bit, but um, definitely e-commerce is very central and core to our long-term ambition at Diageo. And so we are um, obviously needing to resource to achieve the type of growth we're looking for, which comes at all different levels of the organization, including program manager, project manager, analyst type roles. I think we do a pretty good job of making those roles um, publicly available via our career website resources, but I would ask HR to confirm that for me, um, both at the center and at the market level. So I would, I would say definitely make sure you're posting for open roles that you see in our career websites, and then go back to the advice that I talked about, which is once you go through the formal process, make sure you're building the network and making connections and putting your name top of mind so that uh, the people who are in charge of the hiring process know to be on the lookout for um, you in particular. And one thing I'll just add on Paula's is that around specific roles, um, one of the things that we're finding is that, you know, um, technology enables us to 
to have people from all over be part of a team. So just because you happen to be in a market and you know Diageo is headquartered in London doesn't mean you have to be in London to do the job. Paula on her team has people that are based um, around the world, one in Colombia, you know, in the country Colombia, uh, doing e-commerce. Uh, so you know, don't assume that the role necessarily requires a physical move. Um, it may require flexibility on your part uh, in terms of the times that you're working uh, and how you're working. But uh, we're really finding that you know sometimes the best thing to do is find great talent, and that talent is all over the place, and they do not necessarily have to physically move or relocate into um, one of our major offices to be effective. Perfect, thank you. And I just wanted to confirm Zishan has answered uh, around the sponsorship piece, uh, stating that yes, we do offer sponsorship and relocation depending on the role, function and market as well. Okay. So we've got one more question here that is uh, around the um, culture as well. And it just states, uh, what are the qualities in a candidate that are most important for Diageo's culture fit? And if I could pass that to Isabel to maybe start with. I, I, for me, um, I can't actually name one thing because what I see is that different people bring different aspects of who they are to to the team, and that's what makes it so special. But I think, as a as a general rule, what I personally appreciate are people that um, are curious and enjoy learning. So. Um, I talked about how digital is evolving so fast. Um, so I, I don't consider myself to be an expert in, in even like my field, which is the media part of digital, let alone the broader sphere. So it's really important for me that, that people are, are curious and passionate. I think the other thing is that when we're operating at such pace with such complexity, people that know how to simplify very complex concepts, that's definitely something that I really, really appreciate. And then thirdly, uh, you can't do things alone anymore. Um, there are very, very few things that you can do by yourself. Or if you think you can, it's probably better if you do it with someone else. So I'd say it's people that can collaborate brilliantly and know when to bring people in and out to make something um, amazing. So those would be the things that I personally appreciate. I'll just jump in really quick and add two more. I think people who are truly consumer customer centric so this isn't necessarily about how we do things, how a particular discipline is typically done. It's about understanding the consumer, understanding the customer and meeting them where they are versus the, uh, the consumer coming to us. So consumer customer centricity is absolutely huge. And then secondly, on top of that, because the world is changing all day long is flexibility and agility. You just can't get hung up on things, you know? And it's super easy to say, but wait a minute, we said this yesterday. Yep, sometimes mm -hmm. the world changes. In fact, it changes every day. And you gotta just kind of roll with the punches, go with the flow, you know, sail with the tide, whatever you, analogy you want to use, but flexibility and agility is super important. Yeah, I'd agree. And then, you know, one thing that I find um, is this is a very high energy organization. Uh, and so really bringing that passion, the curiosity, the authenticity is very, very um, important. So we don't look for culture clones in any way. We look for, you know, what are you going to bring that's different to the team? Um, what energy and what positive energy do you bring? Um, and so, you know, I think that's the best advice for anyone is just bring yourself. If you're here um, and you're on this uh, webinar, you've already taken a step to say that you know that you are high energy, you're highly motivated, you're curious, or you wouldn't be sitting here right now. Um, so I think that that's a uh, you know just encourage you bring yourself, um, and that that's what we really look for: is someone who's really comfortable with who they are and what they they uniquely bring. Wonderful. 
Um, I think that's all of the questions for now. So um, I'd like to say uh, thank you uh, to all the panelists. I think it's been a great discussion and it certainly does seem like a very exciting time at DRSU at the moment. Um, I just want to say to the audience, um, if you are very much interested in applying for digital roles at Diageo, um, Zishan uh, has posted uh, the links within the chat function, uh, so please do follow that, but also please look at Diageo's diversifying profile to see some more of the opportunities on there. But it's been a really interesting conversation. If you do have any more questions as well, Zishan is more than happy for you to add her on LinkedIn, send across any emails, um, but yes. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. And uh, yet again, to the panelists, thank you very much.